Meta just released Segment Anything 2. We're going to be going over what is Segment Anything 2, why use it, how does it work, limitations of Segment Anything 2, how to prepare your code environment and handling errors, go over a real-time code demo, and finally, we're going to test the limits by using a soccer ball tracking video code demo, as you can see on the right. All my code and doc will be available on my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So what is Segment Anything 2? Segment Anything 2, also known as SAM2, is a foundation model that can segment objects in images and videos. So check it out. You could come over here to this demo page and you could select the object that you want. So you could click on the object and then all you got to do is click track object and you can see that it's tracking this ball pretty nicely in this video. Everything here was trained on the SAV dataset. There's a total of 51,000 videos, 643,000 masklets. Each video had about 12 masklets and also these video had a very high resolution. All of these videos were gathered from all over the world, so you can see that we have a lot of variety. And you can see here on the right, these are just some examples of the different variety that we get in our training data set. So why use Segment Anything 2? I would say one of the biggest reasons why is you no longer have to do training. So previously, for those that have used YOLO, you know that the typical process is you actually have to go in to a bunch of images and have to annotate the location of your object. So in here, you may have to go through several thousand images and annotate the location of the ball. But now we're going to see if we can actually use Segment Anything without training and just a simple prompt to see if you can actually track the ball in the video that we'll see later on. Another huge benefit of Segment Anything 2 is that it can segment objects in videos with occlusion. So here you can see two examples on the bottom here. So these two images, if the foot is in the front or if the boy hides behind the tree. And we'll take a look at a video of this happening in action. So here you can see a video of the ball and soccer foot that I showed earlier. And you can see that even if the foot occludes the ball in some scenes, it could still segment the ball properly. Now here's a second example of the boy hiding behind the tree and you can see as the boy crosses the tree, we can still segment the boy without losing track. Not only that, Segment Anything 2 is much more accurate, especially compared with SAM1. So you can see that here on the left, when you click a seed of this fish right here, it actually ends up taking uh, segmenting another fish that it's not supposed to segment. But here on the right, you can see that when we only click the fish Right here, we only get the fish and we don't get any other extra objects, which would make it more inaccurate. Another huge improvement of Segment Anything 2 is that it's fast. Just look at this chart here, we could see that we have different models from tiny to all the way to large. And even the large one, we're getting an FPS of 24.2. So that's incredibly fast compared to the old one. If you saw my previous video, you could see that how long it takes. So in our real-time demo, you're going to see how fast it actually runs even on a pretty weak computer that I have, and we're gonna test the limits later on. So how does Segment Anything 2 work? So you can see here is an example of the architecture of SAM here. So previously what you have is an image here, and these plus are your seeds that you choose. And then once you have your image, you would pass it inside an image encoder. And then here is the main part that does the magic. So you have a mask decoder, and you have a prompt encoder that um, pass this information to your mask decoder. So you will have things like your mask, points, or box. And then finally, the output would be your image with the masks of the objects that you're interested in. So what SAM2 does is it takes a step further and applies it to a video. So previously with SAM, with, it's only with images. Now we could do it with videos. So pretty much this part is going to be the same, but what they've added is this part called the memory attention. So the memory attention is what links the frames between the different frames in the same video so that it can keep track of the same object. So here again, you have the same part in the center as we saw in SAM1. Um, the main thing here that we'll be using is prompts such as the XY coordinates. But this main part is the memory encoder and memory bank. 
And all of this, once you segment one time, is going to pass that information back in this feedback loop to use some of that information for further mask decoding so that it can keep track of the images. But it's not without its limitations. So some problems that it sees is it can lose track under certain conditions, such as long occlusion, crowded scenes, or extended videos. So here you can see that um, the horse running around, you're going to see Pay attention to these two horses here. So if you notice the head, one has a white mark on it. And then later on, it ends up tracking another horse that doesn't have a white mark. So similar objects can cause a problem. And current solution right now is to refine the prompt throughout the video. So there's going to require some human intervention. So let's take a look at the video of this in action. So you can see here the horse is running around. And at some point when the occlusion is for an extended period of time, the horse tends to lose track. Another limitation is that it can miss fine details in fast moving objects. So you can see here on the bottom with the wheel, some of the spokes are missing. And you can see here, this is the video in real time running. And you can see that because it's moving so fast and the details are so small, some of the details can't be captured. Okay, so if you're trying to run segment anything too locally on VS Code, like what I'm doing, what you might want to do is set up your virtual environment. So go ahead and do that. Uh, you might run into some challenges as you're setting up the repo. So I'll go over some of the things that I had to go through and then the solutions that I came up with. So once you get your virtual environment set up, you could download the segment anything to repo. Uh, if you see the error, the DLL dependency error, OS error, uh, fbgemm.dll, what you want to do is make sure you have your uh, C++ compiler installed if you haven't already. And if pip install dash e doesn't work and you see the error CUDA home environment variable is not set, what you want to do is just go ahead and pip install the modules separately instead of using the pip install dash e. And to get the model ways, just go ahead and go to the repo and download it and put it in the checkpoints folder to get that set up. And along the way, you might see the error cannot import name C from SAM2. To resolve that, just do python setup.py build ext dash dash in place. And to run all the code that I'll be showing, just go ahead and place the files inside of the segment anything to repo that you've cloned. And then in your root folder, what you want to do is have your videos folder in there with your video. So you can see here we have our real-time demo up and running. And you can see that right now I've set the prompt so that it'll select any object that's at the center of the screen. And you can see here that I'm rotating my phone a little bit. And you can see that it updates as I'm rotating. Um, so this is treating each frame as an image here. So it's not actually the video not, not actually tracking the object, but just detecting each frame as if it's new. But this is just to show the real-time performance. And you can see that uh, considering that I'm running it on a pretty weak laptop right now, and considering how SAM1 would, took, would take like several minutes with a large model, this is actually pretty fast just to use a large model to detect an object. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some other objects just to show you how it performs in detecting uh, unseen objects here. So it's tracking my hand right now. If I move it down, you see that it's tracking this lid. And I could rotate it a little bit. And you can see that it captures the this cup pretty well. Or this is actually my Mac, the uh, cap that I made for my mic. And it's doing pretty well. And then let's just give it one more object. This is a transparent bottle here. And you can see that um, it's doing pretty well. It's getting the bottle. And when I rotate it, you can see that uh, it's getting different parts of the bottle. So overall, I would say it's a pretty good job in terms of speed for treating each frame as an image. So excited to see how this will perform in our video coming up. So before I jump into the real-time demo, I like to just go over the architecture of my program. So what I have here is a video of our soccer video. And then from there, we're going to get the video path. And I created a function called extract frames. Some of their documentation says you need the ffmpeg to do some of the frame extraction, but you really don't. So I went ahead and made a function to get my frames. And then from there, what we're going to do is view the first frame so that we can select the location of the object we're trying to choose. And this is what's called our prompt, which is the xy coordinate. 
And then we're going to mask our first frame. And then from there, it's going to set up some inference states. And then it's going to run our main function called segment video. And then from there, we're going to get our video that's labeled with the object that we're trying to track. So you can see here, this is the video that we're going to be testing out. A uh, ball that's moving around with the soccer players blocking it. And one thing I like about this video is that not only is there occlusion, the ball is moving fast, and it's not very clear because the ball is small, and we're going to see how well the Segment Anything 2 model does in this example. So if we take a look at um, our script here, so what I've done is I ran the first part, which is run extract frames, and what this did was it converted all of these soccer videos to uh, images. As you can see here, these are all the images, because some of the way the program is set up from the SAM uh, repo is that it's going to expect all these video frames to be files. So I went ahead and converted that. And then what we're going to see here is run the uh, view first frame. And what this will do is allow us to see the first frame. OK, so once we have the first frame showed up, the main point of this is so that we could put our cursor here, and then we could read the coordinate location of the ball and then use that information as our prompt later on. So once you extract that information, you could go ahead and close this. And next up, what you want to do is run the next command, which is run mask for the first frame. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And what this will do is it's going to mask the first frame just so we could verify if it's doing it correctly. So you can see here that it has now masked the first frame with the object that we selected. So if you look closely here, you can actually see this is the ball that we've uh, selected. So um, if you zoom in, you can kind of see here is that orange dot here. So that is the ball that we're going to track throughout the video. Now for the final step, we're going to run segment video. And this will segment our video using some of the point prompt that we chose earlier. Finally, you can see our output is done now. And you can see that here is the ball that is tracking and it's doing it pretty darn well. So if I zoom in here to, for you to see better, um, you can see that here I slowed it down by a few frames. But you can see that even as the people are blocking, the ball is still being tracked pretty well. And you can see that here some people is coming closer. And he's about to kick the ball soon. And so far, so good. It has not been lost during the tracking at all. So just imagine if you were to do this using YOLO, how long it would have take. And here you can see he's kicking the ball, so the ball's being blocked. Ball's moving super fast, and it still keeps track. So again, if you want my code, check, out, check it out on my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. If you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.